congratulations for having an estate plan in place. The chances are that your wishes will be fulfilled because the people you nominated in your documents will likely have to follow the provisions you have written down, as opposed to not having an estate plan in place and then leaving it up to the Oklahoma law and the court system to decide not only who is in charge of managing your estate, but also who your beneficiaries are and in what percentages. But even if you have an estate plan in place already, let's talk about a few things for you to ask yourself. For example, has your will or trust been reviewed in the last two to five years, let's say? The chances are that a family or a financial change took place in this time. Is there a new child in the family? A new death? Did someone move away? Did you purchase a new life insurance or do you have new bank accounts or investments? How are those included in your current estate plan? An out-of-date estate plan sometimes could be worse than no estate planning at all. For example, imagine if a beneficiary passed away before you did and you do not have time or you forget to update your document. If it's not very clear in your documents who gets that beneficiary's share, that could be a cause for litigation later on. If you have a revocable trust in place as part of your estate plan, is that trust fully funded so that your family can avoid delays and expenses of probate? What does that mean? I often see people who have trust created several years ago, but the new property is not listed in the trust, or they, in the meantime, they inherited some property and they never deeded it into the trust. Real property has to be deeded into the trust in order for the trust terms to apply and to avoid probate. Have you provided for family heirlooms? Oftentimes, family members put up a fight, not over money so much, but over sentimental things. Make sure you have clear instructions on where those precious family heirlooms go. Next, let's talk about fiduciaries. Fiduciaries are the people whom you have nominated in your documents to serve in various roles, such as your power of attorney, your healthcare decision makers, your personal representatives or executors, your successor trustees, or even guardians for your minor children. Are you satisfied still with the persons selected to serve in these roles? Do they still live nearby or are you still happy with their decision making skills? Um, are they still able to act on your behalf? Some of them may be getting older or some of them may have kids of their own and they may not be the best choice for you. Going back to the guardians for your minor children, are you still happy with them? Do your minor children even need guardians. Sometimes people have an adult child now who may be appointed as a guardian for minor children and this option was not available a few years ago. Let's talk about children and other beneficiaries. If it has been several years since you've updated your estate plan, ask yourselves, do the terms of the trust accurately reflect the beneficiary's ability to handle their future inheritance? It could be that by now you realize that some kids or grandkids or beneficiaries may be better with money than others. Some of them may be able to receive their inheritance outright, no conditions, but some of them might need a little extra guidance. What about if you have a child with special needs? Let's say one of your kids or grandkids, a loved one developed a special needs condition and they may need the money to be put in a special trust for them as not to lose benefits. What about your values and goals for the loved ones? Are they included in your documents? How can you do that? Well, by adding provisions encouraging your family members to follow a certain path. By creating incentives for them to do whatever is important to you. For example, you can have provisions to encourage, if that's what's important to you, your kids or your grandkids to go to college. How can you do that? You could say, if my granddaughter um, goes to college and graduates college at the age of 22, she will receive $30,000 or she can wait until she turns 25 if she does not go to college. So that will create an incentive for her if she wants her inheritance early to go to college, graduate at 22 and not wait until they're 25. I've worked with some people who consider military service very important. Again, you can create an incentive for someone to, for example, 
complete a four-year military service, or receive their funds when they turn 30 or, or something like that. Um, some people want to support and encourage their kids or grandkids or loved ones to continue their uh, sports career or their dance career or acting. You can include in your documents provisions to allow for them to follow their dreams. So how can we help? Anything you can dream of, we can put in writing. So if you answered no or not sure or you do not understand some of the questions or some of the topics we discuss today, please give me a call and let's talk about it. We have an hourly rate for estate planning documents review and updates. So give me a call today, 405-857-8231. Thank you for watching.